good evening. Um, my name's Matthew, and uh, if you're new to this uh, uh, podcast, uh, we are a group of Christians that are saved by God's grace. Uh, we are going to heaven, and it is it is uh, by nothing that we have ever done. And if you think that is uh, unfair, I kind of agree with you. Um, it says in Romans 5, 8, uh, God shows his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, if you know anything about Christ, he came down from heaven and he lived a, a, a perfect life and he was put to death uh, to uh, pay for our sins. Again, uh, not, uh, not what I would consider fair. Um, but if we look at uh, Jesus's life, uh, there's a lot of things that we can learn from him. Uh, we know that uh, it says in Philippians 2.6, Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality uh, with God a thing to be gr uh, grasped, meaning he did things in the power of humanity. He was 100% man. They called him the man God or the God man. Um, and that, this blew my mind when I kind of understood or started to understand the implications of that. He did things uh, in the power of of God only because he relied on the other two uh, people of God, the Holy Spirit, and he submitted to the Father's plan. Um, we think about uh, the whole point of this uh, devotion tonight was because you know, this country seems to be in in a time of wilderness. We do not know uh, what's going to happen or uh, what we can expect uh, in the future. Uh, and there was a time that Jesus uh, walked into the wilderness. Uh, it was right before he started his, um, his ministry of three years, and then he, he walked to the cross and, and died. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 1 and 2, uh, it says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And I, I added this because it's so funny. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Um, that, uh, you know, is kind of a dumb moment, especially if you've done any fasting in the past. Um, yeah, you, you kind of get hungry and you kind of get uh, a week and, and uh, yeah, it, it's not, uh, it's not your best day. So, I wanted to focus on, on the first part where Jesus was actually led by the spirit uh, into the wilderness and uh, think about what the implications of that would be. Um, we look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and we say that uh, it says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Meaning, simply put, we have the same Holy Spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness. We need to lean on that spirit to see uh, what we can do in this time and what he might be preparing us to do in this time. Uh, you know, the, the second part of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4 was, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now I've never fasted for that long. Uh, I fasted for five days once and I broke it at Cracker Barrel. That was not too smart. And uh, apparently I didn't learn my lesson. Uh, you know, the second big fast, I, I broke it at Dairy Queen. And uh, that, uh, that, is, that is very painful. Uh, but, uh, you know, to, to say that you know, fasting is really powerful, but, um, you know, you got to think about what, what is fasting all about? Obviously it's about strength. We get strength from, from food and stuff, but I would submit to you that fasting is a lot about getting rid of the distractions in our lives. And it, you know, of course, uh, fasting from food, that, that is legitimate, but I want to, uh, submit that, uh, we have a bigger problem right now. We have a bigger problem with distractions and 
this is our number one distraction. This is a computer. We have so many distractions with technology uh, in, in America today. And I would, I would ask, um, could that be a fast against the technology in our lives be just as legitimate as not eating for 24 hours? And if we, if we did that, I mean, I can't remember, you know, the last time that I spent a day off the internet. I just can't remember any time that, that I've gone that long uh, without those kind of distractions or Netflix or DVDs or anything like that. And if we were to do that or, you know, the, the traditional fasting and just focus on the fact that we are God's temple, how, how uh, devastating could that be in our lives in a good way that uh, we just focus on God for that long without, uh, without the distractions in our lives? Um, like I said before, we do not know what this is, what this is happening, uh, what, what's going on with America right now. It, it's, it's tough. We, we are struggling with some really big issues and we do not know when this is going to end. Jesus spent a lot, he spent his entire ministry focusing on other people, building up disciples, uh, and then going to the cross. And I just wonder, uh, in a good way, you know, could this be God um, persecuting our country or putting us in a situation where we have to focus on him uh, more often? Because when you look at God, you know, Jesus's life and Jesus's ministry, a lot of stuff was done, especially in those last days of death, burial, resurrection. And what we could be looking at is the greatest revival this world has ever seen. People getting saved and being discipled like we have never seen. But I wonder if God is not testing us as a country on whether or not we have the character or that we have the ability to trust in him and focus on him enough to actually take part in this revival or whatever God has for us. Think about what our responsibilities are as individuals, but trust in God's plan. Uh, that's all I got for tonight. Thank you. Have a better night.